peaceful the village looks from here. My, do I detect a note of fondness in your voice? No, you don't. You know, there's nothing I want more than to leave Collins Port as quickly as possible. I think there's several things more you'd like, my dear. And I shall give them to you. If you'll play your part in the little drama I've created for Reverend Trask. I don't want to. I... Save your theatrics, my dear, for Trask. I'm sure he'll appreciate anything you can show him. Oh, Tim, I'm not play acting. You are beautiful. Your face is such a combination of wisdom, really, and innocence. You don't seem to be one certain age the way others are. What's the matter? I don't think that's a very agreeable thing to say. Why be angry? Amanda, I meant it as a compliment. You are beautiful. I could almost envy Trask. If I didn't know better. <laughs> Suppose I do agree to go live at Collinwood. Well, how could I get Trask to accept me? I already said no. Why should I change my mind? Why? Now? Why, indeed. You've already told him that a strange man frightened you. Now tell him that the man followed you here, that you're upset, that you don't want to be alone, that only 24 hours a day with that wonderful Mr. Trask can give you the, the strength, the, the will, the power to fight him. <laughs> I don't think it's funny. There's something very amusing about it, Amanda. And what's that? Trask's incredible conceit. Tell him anything, no matter what, and he'll ask, nay, beg to hear even more. The whole situation frightens me. Collinwood will be much too luxurious a place for you ever to be frightened there. <laughs> it's almost as elegant as the Collins Port Inn. I've seen nice things before. I'm sure you have. You, you really think I'm nobody, just because, well, I'm somebody. And let me tell you, Tim Shaw, this, this somebody will never marry Gregory Trask. I wouldn't want you to do anything that would take you away from me permanently. Tim, I, I want someone to care for me so much. I care for you. No, no, really care for me. <laughs> I don't, I don't want all of this, all of Collinwood, even this. I want to go away. Oh, Tim, let's go away. And we shall, my dear. We'll go. As soon as we do what I set out to do. And I wouldn't go throwing diamonds away. We're not that rich. Yet. Amanda. You are going to do everything I want you to. Aren't you? No! Aren't you? Well... We'll see. The truth is I'm afraid. I'm afraid that all my good intentions won't be enough to... to keep me away from him. Amanda, you've never told me who this man is. And I never will. Well, perhaps I'm presumptuous, but I, I feel that your concern for me would, would cause you to confront him. And if anything happened to you because of me, I'd never forgive myself. And if anything happened to you, I would never forgive myself. But nothing will happen to you now, my dear. You have, so to speak, Come home. Where are your things, my dear? My things? Oh, at the inn. I'll go and get them. Oh, well, no. 
I wouldn't... Well, I'd rather no one knew. Now, my dear, you must not worry about what people will say. What you are doing is perfectly proper. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I didn't mean to imply that... You don't want me here. You, you don't know what I'm really like. I have never known anyone so thoroughly before in my life. I understand you, Amanda Harris. I can help you. Now, your luggage is at the inn. No, let me get it. A, a phone call will bring it here. Very well, my dear. In the meantime, I will speak to the housekeeper about getting a room ready for you. I want to make sure you are very comfortable here in your new home. Collinsport 46, please. Tim Shaw. Tim, it's me. There has to be another way to do what you want to do. Well, I can't stand looking at him. And the way he follows me around the room. Amanda, you know this is the best way to handle the situation. I don't care if it is or not. I'm not staying. He's coming. I'll call you back. Uh, is that you, Reverend Trask? Try again. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Collins. You remember me? Uh, of course. I appreciate the honor. I'm sure a girl like you has a lot of names to remember. Uh, I'm glad you know so much about a, a girl like me. You know more than I do myself. I know you're very beautiful. And you're very handsome. And neither of us are very happy, are we? Uh, when you were a little girl, what did you wish for when you saw the first star? I don't remember ever wishing on a star. I'd like to get to know you a lot better, Miss Amanda Harris. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we can talk again someday. I'm afraid I have to go. I must make a phone call. Uh, you know, it's been an unexpected pleasure. But then this whole day has just been full of surprises. If you'll excuse me. Collins 46, please. Uh, Tim Shaw. Tim. Amanda, Amanda, now you listen to me. You're not a child anymore. We've discussed this. You have to go through with it as we planned. Do you understand? Tim, you must listen to me. I would like you to bring my luggage over to Collinwood as quickly as possible. What? What do you mean? You, you've decided to stay. What? Well, that's wonderful. What made you change your mind? Well, you were right. I, I did let myself get... Far too upset over nothing. I think things will be just fine here in Collinwood. Oh. And who is that, my dear? Uh, that was the, uh, the manager at the inn. He's been so fatherly towards me. He's, he's sending my luggage right over.
doing here? Why are you playing his music? Miss Trask, you are never to play his music again. I didn't know whose music it was. You never tell the truth. Believe me, love, I got an eye for character and I know you. I know you the first time I ever saw you walk out of this house. I don't know when that was, but you're quite wrong. What do you do in here anyway? I live here, if that's any business of yours. So, you're after him too. Oh, I'm not after any. You were playing his song. I was trying to explain to Who told you you could live in this house anyway, huh? Oh, Reverend Trask. Oh, he did, did he? Well, I'll just find out about that for myself. Hey, Trask! Trask! If you'll excuse me. You ain't going nowhere. Charity? Why do you call me that stupid name that won't stop me from speaking my piece? Did you ask? Ah, uh, here. Charity, go up to your room. Did you or not? Amanda is here as my guest. Now you're going up to your room. Are you let go of me? Oh. Amanda, will you please wait here? I shall be back shortly. Come along. Come along. Poor Charity, a great trial, but at least, my dear, you can see that you are not alone in having a misfortune. But it seemed as though she, she hates me so much. Hatred is a sign of the devil's presence, just as love is of our makers. I am fortunate that our maker has seen fit to give me the strength to help whatever unfortunates I may meet. Will you excuse me for a moment, my dear? Although there is someone I should very much like for you to paint. A dear girl, buffeted by life, in need of confidence and stability. Yes. Yes, it's an admirable idea. Come, Mr. Tate. Come, I want you to meet her. Amanda, we have a very great honor. Charles Tate has agreed to paint you. Mr. Tate, this is Amanda Harris. I know. I know. You have met Miss Harris before, Mr. Tate. No, we... I saw her once in the end. Well, Miss Harris is staying here with us now. Amanda, you should feel quite thrilled that the famed Mr. Tate has agreed to paint you. Oh, I, I am. Then it's settled. I shall leave the two of you to discuss the details. I would like the preliminary sketches, at least, to be done here. That is my only request. Do you feel it? I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, do you feel the way I do? that you've seen me before. Well, please, tell me the truth. You, you must feel like that. I haven't met you. I, I think I should remember. Although, Count Petoffi asked me if I knew a Mr. Tate. Well, having seen you, I, I know I haven't. Then you do feel like you have seen me before. Why should I? Why should I feel that way? We've, we've just met. There's so many things I have to know. When were you born? 
Please, that's uh, not such an unusual question. Yes. Yes, it is. Please don't ask that. Please don't. The only reason I'm asking it is that I have to know. Well, there's nothing to know. Nothing. Please, um, Miss Harris. Please tell me. I feel like I should try to tell you. Why do I feel that way? Please, please tell me. I don't know anything about myself. That's the truth. Please, you have to tell me. I, re I remember a newspaper lying on the street. I it was a strange street. I picked it up. I didn't have a purse or, or, or jewelry or, or nothing that would give me a hint about myself. You don't know how many hours I read that newspaper trying to find, find something, just something that would help me remember before that date. How long ago was that? Uh, not long. The date. Try to remember the date. Uh, how could I forget it? Well, tell me, what was it? March 11th, 1895. You'll have to wait here for me. I can't explain what I have to do any more than you can tell me about yourself. You'll have to excuse me. Well, me proud love. You've won the battle, but not the war. Where are you going? Oh, I'll be back. Don't you worry your head about that. I'll be back, and when I am, you'll be sent packing. You're gonna be so unhappy here. You're gonna be so sorry you stayed. <laughs> Why do you stay here? And what's this game you're playing? The fallen woman in search of truth. I didn't say it was that. I wouldn't believe you if you had. But you are here for a reason. No. Amanda, look at me. I think you're quite capable of taking care of yourself. You're strong enough without trast prayers. Do you want me to leave this house? No, of course not. I just don't want you to get mixed up with Trask. Perhaps you're not aware of the way he looks at you, but I am. Now, what are you doing here? Oh, I can't explain it to you. Why? Well, be because... Because it... It started before I knew you. It, it made sense to me then, perhaps, as, as much as anything else did. And it doesn't now? I don't know. Oh, please, Quentin, let me figure it out my own way. All right. I'll let you. If you meet me tomorrow night after dinner. Not here. No way. Away from Trask's prying, huh? That's all right. In the garden? I'll, I'll try. No, 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 no. None of that. Do you want to come? Yes. Yes, I want to come. Then you will. That's what I mean. 
I'm not going to hide the fact that we're together. Well, well, well. Good evening, Mr. Tate. An odd hour to call, isn't it? Well, I was just uh, passing by the house. And you were curious to see who was up, huh? No, I saw a light on and I... I thought maybe Miss Harris would, would be here. Miss Harris, I have to talk to you. It'll, it'll only take a minute. It's very important. I didn't know you two knew each other well enough for anything to be important. The Reverend Trask has asked me to paint a portrait of Miss Harris. Well, this is an ideal time to discuss it, Tate. What's so important? The color of her gown? Oh, please, Quentin. Uh, will you leave us? But I don't have any other choice, do I? What do you want, Mr. Tate? I have to talk to you. Because I know everything. Because I... I know why you can't remember anything before March 11th, 1895. You know about me? Yes. Don't tell me, please. Well, it's... It's not gonna be easy. Oh, please tell me. Look, the last time I saw you was here, right? And you told me that you didn't remember anything before March 11th, 1895. Well, that... that date meant something to me, too. But I didn't know exactly what, so I... I went back to my studio and I found a painting. A painting that I did on March 11th, 1895. The date was right there on the painting for anybody to see. Oh, yes, but what is the painting to do with me? Miss Harris, that painting was of you. But you didn't know me. Perhaps it's someone who resembled me. No, I, I painted a portrait of a, a face I wanted to create. A face I wanted to see. Your face. I don't know what you're saying. What I'm saying is that when I painted you, you came into being. You're mad. Oh, look at me. Do I, do I look mad? Well, if you aren't, it's, it's the most romantic bit of nonsense I've ever heard in my look, life. I can prove it to you. Now, that night, I, I went back to the studio and I, I couldn't get you out of my mind. Well, there's something I do when I, when I want to forget something, I, I start to sketch. I did a still life. There were some things on a table across the room. And, and when I was almost finished, I thought the sketch needed something to balance it off, a, a vase, and I thought it up. It wasn't on the table. I just dreamed up a vase, and I, I sketched it. And when I sketched it, that vase appeared on the table. Mr. Tate, you're, you're hallucinating. I'm telling you the truth, and I can prove it now. Look. This table. Now, there's nothing on it, is there? Nothing. I'm going to sketch a glass on that table. Now, you just look at it. Mr. Tate, I, I can't believe any of this. You need help. Obviously, you're, you're overworked. Just look at the table. There. There, now. Describe the glass that's on the table. Go on! There is no glass. No. Oh. I'm telling you, I sketched it. I don't care oh. about your sketch. I don't want to hear any more of this. Listen, you've got to come to my studio now. You've got to see the portrait. The portrait that I painted. And the brooch. <laughs> I didn't even tell you about the brooch. Things you gotta come. I don't want to. I'm Let telling you, go. you gotta come to my studio. No! Oh. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, let go of me. Having second thoughts? 
I had to see the painting for myself. Well, what do you think? I don't know what to think. You still don't believe what I told you? If you were me, would you believe it? I guess I wouldn't want to believe it. At least you understand how I feel. Well, Commander, I never saw you before I did that portrait. March 11th, 1895. Now, that's the first day that you remember anything. Please, you've gone all over that before. I didn't come here to go over it well, again. Well, tell me, why did you come here? Just to look at it. No, you came here to find out if I told you the truth. If it were the truth, I wouldn't want to know about it. The thought that I, I could be some kind of an unnatural creature, the figment in someone's imagination is, is frightening. Frightening? Don't you think it's frightening to me? I have some kind of, some kind of a strange power. Look, I've seen it. I tell you, I've seen it. And I'll show you. What are you doing? I'm going to give you a little demonstration. You've already done that before and nothing happened. Look, I can't explain why nothing happened before. I don't have any more idea about this power than you do. There is no power at all. It, it, it's just coincidence. All right. Then let me prove it to you. Now. Now. It's almost finished. What is it you're drawing? It's this sketch. A sketch of a man. An ordinary man. No name, no identity. And no previous physical existence. There. A man totally the creation of Charles Delaware Tate. What are you saying? Oh, Tim, I don't expect you or anyone to believe it, but now somehow my life makes a crazy kind of sense. Amanda, the things you've been telling me just now make no sense at all. Then why can I remember nothing before that first day he sketched me? The reasons why you cannot remember your past may be lost in obscurity, but they certainly have nothing whatever to do with Mr. Charles Delaware Tate. The man's conceit must be simply incredible for him to imagine... He's he not imagining. Tim, I have proof. I saw him create someone else. You saw what? He sketched a man and... and suddenly the creature appeared in the room. Exactly as he was on paper. Now let me get this straight. You say that the sketch he made right there suddenly simply became a man in the very room? Yes. I saw him. Hmm. Amanda. Amanda, you and I are going to pay a little visit to Mr. Tate. Right now. Tell me what you feel. Tell me. I'm trying to do what I'm telling you. Shaw, what a surprise. You aren't surprised at all, Tate. You know why I'm here. Amanda, come on in. Nothing's going to happen to you. I don't know why anything should happen to someone as pretty as Miss Harris. The last time she was here, she saw you create a man. She saw me do what? She saw a sketch that you did come to life. Listen, if, uh, 
If she told you that, I think you better take her to a doctor and not here. She been under a strain lately? What have you done with it? I haven't done anything with it. Except for the three of us, we're alone. I'd like to find that out for myself, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. I don't like people poking around my studio. However, since uh, your accusation is so bizarre... There was a man! And uh, that young lady's state of mind is so extraordinary. Be my guest. Look as much as you like. <laughs> That's where it was. There's a sketch of you here. <laughs> well, of course there is. Reverend Trask uh, commissioned me to do a portrait of Miss no, Harris. No, you mustn't paint me. Look, Mr. Shaw. Now, I've uh, put up with your suspicions. I've let you look all through the, my studio and uh, look at both of you. You didn't find anything. You didn't find a sketch and you didn't find a man, did you? No. No, I didn't. All right. How long are you going to continue to believe the unbelievable? Look, if you were really a friend of hers, why don't you take her where she can really get some help? She needs it. Now, I've got a lot of work to do. He's lying. I saw the sketch. I saw the man. Amanda, we'd better go. Tim, you've got to believe me. Tim, look. Look. Mr. Tate? Yes, what is it? Your work will have to wait. Let's just see what's behind this door, Mr. Tate. Shall we? Look, uh, there is no one in there now. It's, it's just a closet. I've got a few clothes and some supplies in it, that's all. We'll be glad to find that out for ourselves. Give me the key. I don't have it. Mr. Tate, I have a gun. Surely you have a key. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yes. Just as you created her. Yes. Well, how did you do it? What what happens? I don't know. It, it just happens. Have you have you made these creatures often? Perhaps. I I don't know. Draw me one. No. Draw I, me one right now. I can't. I, I I'm not gonna do anymore. Now you say that now. But perhaps when you think about the possibilities... Look, I have thought about the possibilities. And it terrifies me. Well, it doesn't terrify me. Oh, no. In fact, it rather fascinates me. This... This creature here fascinates me. In fact, if you don't draw me one, I shall simply have to take this one with me. No, no. Yes. Please. You can't take it. Oh, yes, I can. Good day to you, Mr. Tate, please. I do take care of Amanda, but I'm sure you'll do that. <laughs> what do I, your creation, do now? 
Let me take care of you. Marry me. Please. How can you propose to something unreal? Amanda, you are not unreal. Uh, you can touch. And you can feel. And you can love. Love? I can never love anyone. No one can ever love me. Give me a chance, Amanda. You'll see. I've already seen. I used to wonder what I was like in the time before I could remember. I saw that man today, unable to speak, trembling with fear to find himself in a world where he doesn't belong. I saw that creature and I saw myself. Oh, man, it's just nonsense. Look. Look at me. Oh, you can love. No, but I can hate, and I hate you, Charles, for finding me and proving to me what I am. Oh. Yes, Charles, I hate you. Oh, Amanda. I wish you'd left me alone.